this time we'll call this meeting to order. I don't see Reverend Mark Chumney from Victoria, from Victory Christian Fellowship. I'm going to ask that Minister Brenda Lockhart lead us in the invocation and the pledge. This time we all stand. Father God, we come right now, Lord Jesus, God, another day, God, that you have made and we are glad in it. God, we ask you to come to this meeting, Lord, and sup with us, God. Look around the room, God, meet needs tonight, God, and we thank you for these commissioners, God, that labor uh, for the city, God, and just help us all to come together, God, and make a greater community. We love you, we magnify you, we lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Roll call, please. Mayor Hill. Here. Vice Mayor Brown. Present. Commissioner Borum. Present. Commissioner Campbell. Present. Mr. McCaskill here. All members are present accounted for and we know a quorum. Thank you very much. Moving on, has everyone had an opportunity to do a few minutes? Second. There's a motion on the floor to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries unanimously. For today, we've only got one. <laughs> Under item one of the agenda, which is our public recognition and presentations, we have one proclamation today. So we're going to ask that the Pilot Club of Palaka please come forward at this time. proclamation reads as follows. Whereas in 1921 in Macon, Georgia, a group of civic-minded business leaders established an international service organization whose founding members combined their diverse talents in friendship and service to improve the quality of life in communities throughout the world. And whereas Pilot International is comprised of nearly 7,000 Pilot Club members and 7,500 Anchor Club members worldwide whose mission is to influence positive change in communities throughout the world. And whereas to do this, members, are, members come together in friendship and give people an outlet for service, focusing on preparing youth and young adults for service, encouraging brain safety and health, and supporting those who care for others. And whereas Pilot International furthers the organization's humanitarian efforts through scholarships and grants to support research, education, and community caregiving programs, and partners with Project Lifesaver and Brain Injury Associations of America and whereas pilot clubs throughout the world are dedicated to meeting the needs of communities through volunteerism. Now therefore, I, Terrell Hill, Mayor of the City of Palatka, Florida, together with the members of the Palatka City Commission, do hereby proclaim that October 18th is hereby designated as Pilot International Founders Day in the City of Palatka, because it's befitting that the achievements and contributions of this world, of this worthwhile international organization its club and members be recognized for their contributions to this community and witness where I'm up here to set my hands and cause to be affixed the seal of the city of Palatka, Florida on this 10th day of October in the year of our Lord 2019. Terrell Hill Mayor, Mary Lawson Brown, Rufus Borum, Justin Campbell, Tammy McCaskill Valentine, Commissioners, I'll entertain a motion. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Let's give them a round of applause. Three sentences. Thank you for recognizing Violet International Founders Day. Palaka is a wonderful community. We feel blessed to be able to work collaboratively with you to provide services related to preparing youth and young adults for service encouraging brain safety and health, and supporting those who care for others. Within the last couple years, 
part of our collaboration has been to provide swings for disabled students. And I know we're still in the process, and I hear there's another one coming, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and just know that if there is a need that we can help with, our members will be there. And we thank you so much for all you do, because it's a work in progress, but we're moving. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Two of the agenda, which is public comments. Public comments will be limited to three minutes, no action. We'll be taken on topics of discussion, but just prior to us entering public comment, um, Ms. Piggers, you've got a special introduction for us today? I do have a special introduction for us today. Sarah, would you join me? Thank you. Pleased and proud to present to you Ms. Kara McCoy. She is the new Assistant City Clerk for the City of Columbia. I feel it. Kara comes to us from the Clerk of Courts office over in uh, St. Johns County where she handled misdemeanor courts. Court court right. Yeah, misdemeanors and felonies, and so she'll be right at home and delighted. <laughs> no, we're, this, it, this is going to be an easy crowd for you. Um, and so uh, she, she has a ton of experience working in law offices. She even <coughs> worked in R.J. Larissa's office coming straight out of, out of high school. So we're really pleased to have her. Um, she's going to be a great addition to the clerk's office. She already is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And she is from Palatka. She's yeah, yeah, right. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, that's wonderful. Well, we want to certainly just down. welcome her to, yeah, to the city. Yeah, we look we look forward to working. It's, it's definitely still oh, good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So, anyone wishing to speak during public comment, please fill out the yellow speaker's card. As you approach the podium, please give us your name and address for the record. We have one speaker who's filled out a car, Mr. Rick Stackpole. You have three minutes. All right, I well, like <laughs> You have two minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> Rick Stackpole, 108 Farm Street. Uh, just regarding, regarding um, the fire department and use of equipment. I know there's some firefighters here. I love you guys, and nobody's going to lose their jobs or anything like that. But it's regarding that ladder truck that I see screaming up and down the street all day, uh, a lot of times by my house, which I don't care about the sound, uh, screaming and honking and going somewhere. And um, uh, I don't know if it's going to a fire all the time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, here's, a, here's a scenario, a hypothetical scenario. If that thing goes out, I assume, I assume there's a charge every time it leaves the station. And let's, let's, I'm going to say it's like 500 bucks. So if it leaves the station just once a day, on the average, every year, that's $162,000 every year for that truck leaving the station. And, um, and I talked to somebody today that said they heard it go by the house three times. So that's, you know, it, that's, that's half a million dollars possibly a year on that truck. Now, I, it, is it going to a fire every time? Um, I hear it goes out for car wrecks and stuff like that. Now, if, if it's not going to a fire, we need to send some other equipment, you know, because uh, that truck is not is, is there for fires, you know, and it has a ladder. And I assume if you're going to use the ladder truck <coughs> as it's pr as it should be used, it must take a crew of six or something to fight a fire with with the ladder truck. And there's probably a couple guys on the truck. And um, I just don't see it using that truck all the time. I mean, I, I just look at our budget on the the, the plaque. The budget is like thirty two million dollars, right? Um, so, if we're wasting half a million dollars on a truck uh, that, that's, I mean, I, I, I saw a guy the other day uh, got tapped on a bicycle uh, at the corner of St. John's and Palm, and five cop, there was four cop cars there, two ambulances, and a ladder truck, and um, 
just it's just a waste of uh, uh, you know uh, it's not proper use of equipment. And you know you guys you, you guys you know you, if you that drive a ladder truck, go out in another vehicle, help out, you know whatever. But um, you know having that ladder truck go out screaming up and down the street, I don't I don't think there's that many fires every year. We got to have the truck you know in case of fire, and it's got a ladder on it. I mean most stuff in Black Bay, even two story in, in Florida. I guess a ladder truck has to have a ladder on it, but <laughs> it takes two stories around here except downtown, you know. Uh, anyhow, I just hear that thing screaming up, and, and I'm wondering about the cost of it, you know. And uh, it's an expensive vehicle to take out every time or something, and I hope it's not going out there with this ladder saving cash or something. 30 seconds. And that's all I had. I was, I'd, like to, I'd like to know that what, what it, can we get the numbers on that? You know, what what is it costing the city to, for that truck to go out? How many times does it go out? And what's the purpose when it goes out? That's all I have. Thank you. Do I wait for a response? So. I'd like to let Chief Ryan respond to you about why it, why it goes out and, and the reason it goes out on the call. Um, I'll approach the first question about the ladder truck running three times today. That is not an accurate statement. It hasn't left where it's sitting. Um, you're absolutely welcome to come down to the fire station. We've tried the mileage on it every single day. Um, the truck that comes streaming across town on a regular basis may be the one coming from East Palatka um, that responds to a geographic area because that's where their career department is. Um, I'm not sure that we even sent a fire engine on a call today. Uh, most days our, our uh, everyday calls are answered out of a F-250 pickup truck. Um, so we may have had a car wreck. Our response plan does require us to respond to fire engine to a car wreck. Um, but the ladder truck has not moved today. Uh, my shift captain is sitting right back there on the back thing. If the ladder truck would have moved today, I would have known about it. Um, so what was the other questions other than the ladder truck? Because I mean it doesn't move but maybe one or two days a month to go on an actual fire. And that's, all, that's all that goes on. Is does it, it respond to all car accidents? It does not. It responds to all fires in the south and north historic district, any fires inside a commercial zoned area, and into our industrial facilities. So it responds to fires only? That's correct. Okay. Unless, 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 unless the guys are in it on a driver train and they catch a call while they're going by. Okay, maybe it was so, the other truck you are talking about. Very well could have been. There's only one ladder truck in our county, and it sits inside of our station. Okay, thank you. I, I didn't want to so, the one that comes by here most of the time is the county. I just heard one screaming by here, by the way. That, that was the county, <laughs> that's the county truck. That's the one that we got. Hey, moving on to item three of the agenda. Uh, consent agenda. On our consent agenda, we've got items A through N today. Are there any items on the consent agenda that you wish to have removed at this time? There's a motion by Commissioner Campbell to approve the consent agenda as written. Uh, is there a second? Second. There's a second. Is there any further discussion? Question. Questions called. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Moving on to item four of the agenda resolution ratifying author authorizing execution of a union contract agreement with professional firefighters of Palaka Local 2992. Effective October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2022. I would suspect that would be enough pro -tunk. So we will at this time, Ms. Triggers. A resolution of the City of Palatka, Florida, authorizing the execution of a contract agreement with the Professional Firefighters of Palatka, Local 2992, effective, effective October 1, 2019 through September 30th, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. A motion on the floor in a second. We'll now open the floor for public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Do we have anyone from Local 2292 that wants to speak? Seeing no one, we'll close the public comment. Is there any further discussion? Questions. Questions called. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, gentlemen. We have an agreement. Moving forward, and I want to give kudos out uh, to Mr. Garner for stepping in uh, and working closely with the union to make that happen. Uh, and so it seemed to be a pretty seamless process in getting that in place, and also um, to Mr. Holmes as well for the review. 
And so again, thank you guys. Thank you, Chief. Thank you um, to our firefighters. Let's give those guys a round of applause. <laughs> Firefighters, they may not be great softball players, but they are great <laughs> firefighters. <laughs> There's only one in the back of the room. You know. <laughs> nah, I just give him a hard time. But no, we got great firefighters, and those guys go over and beyond the call of duty. You'll see it again this year, uh, especially during the Christmas time where they go out and give out thousands of gifts to kids throughout the community. But from fire safety, from what we'll be doing this month and overall, you just see these guys work over and beyond the call of duty, and we really appreciate you and the stuff that you're doing, and we appreciate your patience as we begin to continually grow the city of Palatka, and we're glad to see those new fire trucks in place so that you guys can continually work more efficiently and not have a 95 truck out there working. So again, thank you. Uh, may I tell them one more thing about how right. we get a break with our, in home, our, home, in our insurance with our homes and so our, our fire department is an ISO is rated as an ISO two. ISOs go from two to ten. Uh, one to ten. One to ten. I'm sorry. One to ten. We're gonna say two because we're two. Uh, but from from one to ten, we're an ISO two. We're one point away this time from a one. Point. So we're only one point away from an ISO one. What that means is for the average citizen, it translates into additional savings on your insurance. Um, our fire department is rated to serve from Palatka throughout Francis. And so those guys, uh, just through their work, through their, the excellent training, the amount of equipment that they have in place, um, as well as other factors, they've been put in a position where those savings pass on to us as citizens, anyone who's is in that geographical region. And so again, we just appreciate all that they do, the in-service training and the work that's put in place with that. And so um, we're, we're grateful for the work that they do. And oftentimes, it's a thankless job, and we just really appreciate it. And so it's always good when we can laugh together and have you guys sit in here and we can come to agreements as it relates to moving forward in the future. And so, definitely much appreciated. I still hold my comments on softball. Um, <laughs> hey, I think we do have a trophy down there that puts us as the champions of the last softball tournament. Well, there's an announcement that's going to be made from recreation where we can talk about that later. <laughs> there's a new challenge coming. So moving forward with item five of the agenda, authorizing submission of an application for the Florida Recreation Department Assist Development Assistance Program for that, for the fiscal year 2021 for the development of Booker Park Phase 2 for an amount of $50,000. A resolution authorizing the submission of an application for the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Pro Program, FRDAP, to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection for State of Florida fiscal year 2020-2021 for Booker Park Phase 2 and the amount of $50,000. So I'm still on the floor in a second. Is there anyone here for public comment? Seeing no one here for public comment, is there any discussion? I'd just like to say that both for that grants that are coming forward are duplications of grants that were out there last year. Uh, no different. There were no FERDAP grants awarded last year, and so we resubmitted this year uh, to see if those grants would again score high enough for us to receive funding. Is there any further discussion? Question. Question is called. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item six of the agenda. Resolution authorizing submission of an application for Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program for the fiscal year 2021 for the development of Hank Bryan Park Phase 2 for the amount of $50,000 for adoption. A resolution authorizing the submission of an application for the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program, FRDAP, to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection for State of Florida for the State of Florida fiscal year 2020-2021 for Hank Bryan Park, Phase 2, in the amount of $50,000. Second. a motion on the floor and a second. No, before public hearing. Is there anyone here for public hearing? Seeing no one, we will close public hearing. Is there any further discussion? Question. Questions called. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 7, new city manager search contract with William P. Bill Shanahan Jr. Ms. Robinson. Good evening. Deborah Robinson, Human Resources. Mr. Shanahan, along with Ms. Higginbotham with the Mercer Group. Mr. Holmes and myself will meet on Monday 
at 11 a.m. with Mr. Holmes in his office to discuss his contract. So nothing's been defined as of yet. We won't know anything until Monday. That date was a date selected when Mr. Shanahan was, so was chosen last week. It was a date when, when he, he could be here and uh, everyone else could do the commercial group. So that's how that date was arrived at. Mm -hmm. yeah, do you have any idea what he's going to make the Paper scared me today. I, I know that's right. <laughs> 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 well, that's not because I said another. <laughs> so, Mr. Holmes, what do you any other questions? No. Seeing none, thank you, Ms. Robinson. Thank you. We look forward to you guys reporting back to us. As we move forward, City Manager and Administrative reports from the back. <coughs> Chief Brown, you got anything for us today? Ms. Robinson, you got anything else? Any job openings available? You've got to. Chief has three job openings with the fire department. So, sure. Uh, um, we got kind of busy around Hurricane Dorian, but we did receive the uh, federal safer grant for um, three firefighter positions. Uh, we started advertising on September the 15th. Um, we ran applications for almost a full month now. We're going to stop the application period on, I think it's Tuesday, the 15th of October. Um, so far, we've only collected seven applications. Um, it's really hard in the tough market right now because everybody around us is hiring as everybody's growing. Um, so if anybody knows anybody that's in fire school that's looking for a job, uh, please send them our way. Um, the applications are available through Ms. Robinson's office, also at the fire station offline. Um, so... I think I'm going to have a total of five positions open because I've got a couple of guys that are going to other counties. So, uh, thank you. Okay. Mr. Holmes, do you have anything for us? No. Okay. Um, Ms. Triggers. <laughs> Mr. Ewell. So we, we are looking for a part time administrative operations. So my head or if anybody knows anybody looking to, uh, for a part-time job at the airport it's uh, not a full-time job with benefits and all that but we are looking for a part-time administrative operations assistant what is that, uh, what is that? It, 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 helping the uh, chief of maintenance uh, take care of outside stuff and then also coming in and handling the front counter uh, making the cash sales and greeting customers and uh, catching airplanes and uh, catching. Sorry. Yeah, we got to be strong. Okay. But it's kind of an unusual job, uh, in, involving outside work and front counter support, and it would uh, uh, result in watching the airport one weekend a month. Thank uh, you. By themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Tucker. No, thank you. Uh, Mr. Garner. Just, I'd like to thank y'all for allowing me to be here, and I'll be here as long as you need me. Uh, working out the agreement or working with the new, new manager, as long as you have me here, uh, let you know I, I have a, 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 a submitted application for a couple of cities to for a job, but uh, you know, I, we have a 14-day notice in, in the, the agreement I have with you, so whatever, whatever how that feels out, but I'm here, and I've really enjoyed uh, being here, and uh, I think you probably got a got a good good manager coming in. Uh, I, I, I've talked and interacted with each one of them that were here, and, and uh, any, I think any of us you'd have chosen, you'd have been happy with. Probably. We've enjoyed you as well, and um, I can tell you, kudos to you for coming into Palaka, doing a great job, having a great rapport with our employees and with this commission, and we just love you to death. And so we definitely appreciate you coming in stepping in when we needed you and we just want to tip our hats to you at this time. So I want to give you a round of applause. <laughs> Any comments from the commission? Oh, I just, uh, I, know I have, I have the same sentiment about uh, our interim right now. I certainly thank him for just stepping right in and hitting the ground with his knowledge and experience. I mean, it showed well what he did with the, 
firefighters and some of the other things that uh, I had them uh, working on or what have you. So again, I can't thank you enough for what you have done for the city and uh, um, wish you well. We certainly would love to have you back in the event that we'll, um, anything comes about. Sure, like to be considered. Yes, sir. Any closing comments? At this I, oh, Go ahead. I was going to say, I talked to a lot of departments and uh, department heads. And it seems that you they fell in love with it. <coughs> they all had oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did, I guess you you got a good wife because she shared you with yeah, yeah, yeah. We enjoyed meeting her and having her with us. And thanks for keeping us going. Sometimes when we have to get new people in or somebody to step in, they put stuff to a halt and we've had that before. This time some of the important things stayed on the table. And thanks for you're sure welcome, and, and till the day I walk out, you know, I'll, I'll try to do my 110% for you. You're about 140%. <laughs> you hardly ever take a break. <laughs> well, I'm not saying my goodbye to the end. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right. Right. And he's still working his plane, so. That's right. He works hard. Uh, Commissioner Borer, close remarks. Well, I also like to. Welcome, Miss Is it Kara? Kara, Kara yes. Miss, I'd like to welcome Miss Kara to the team, and look, certainly look forward to working with you. And uh, I'm so blessed to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Right. And you, so you're returning back to Palak. I am. Yes, sir. I have my roots. Other than that, I mean, that's all I have. Look, just, I'm done. Commissioner Campbell. Uh, welcome to the um, <laughs> to the crew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I also returned home, hit the ground running. Okay. Um, it looks like you're doing the same. We're a very hands-on commission. We look forward to working with you. Um, and we still have tickets for the chief scale that's occurring next week. If you'd like a ticket, citizens of Palaka, come see me. I have you. What's the price? The price of the tickets are forty dollars, and the proceeds from the tickets can go to the police athletic league. Do they have opportunity to purchase the table? Yes. And what's the price for the table? Oh, actually, no more tables. We just trying to. Okay. Mr. Parsons got the last table. Vice <laughs> Mayor. Oh, I would like for us to let people know what's being done with the city. A lot of times folks ask us what's going on. Uh, I rode around when we had some people here the other day with our fire chief, and he began to say uh, some of these new stores were looking at coming restaurants and stores coming to town. Um, I'd like for us to put it out there so people will know to be encouraged that. And I'd like for them to know about all the work that's being done. Uh, <laughs> people complaining about our streets and, and them being torn up. And I know how that feels, but the result is going to be so great that I think everybody needs to know it's not just being done to be done. It's done to, to make a change and change the quality of life. I thought that we had those project update sheets back there available at one point. The new stores, when they come in, it's, you can't put it out right. because right. it's um, it's confidential information until they go into permitting. But the things that we're doing, I think that's what you're talking about too. I think we have project update sheets back there, didn't we? provide that for the public at one point and we expect you to put it on the website. No. But you know, a lot of times the uh, the public doesn't look at our website. We got um nobody looks at it now. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, I've been but looking, but we are uh, we uh we tape our meetings and I was surprised that people tell me I saw you on TV the other day and I'm oh damn been on TV. Two twenty nine and then I realized they're talking about our meeting. I just think Sometimes we just need to say, hey, this project is going on, and if we know when some of them are going to be completed, or we're going to do a celebration, or anything that comes up. And stuff like what the, the city, firefighters in the city do for um, Halloween, you know, um, somebody was saying, we can't go down the ninth street with the trick or treat stuff, but you can go out to the mall. And we just need to update people a little bit. So if we could just have a little something somebody do like they do announcements in the church. So that people would will know most people will pick it up well, but they can read it out the paper and not if they see it on the television. Can I might want to take on that? 
Well, there's, there's, I always give it to the new person, Carol. Welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, well whenever they, they promote, they promote it in different um, media streams or whatever. So it's being promoted. Um, but not enough. You know, people think people think we sit up here and just come to meeting twice twice a month. And I'm telling you from sitting here because I had somebody ask me what I've done since I've been there. I'm sorry to say, I don't want to keep it in the mix because I usually don't say much, but usually the people that think we don't do anything are the ones that don't come to the Are not engaged. Yeah, so, not you know, so maybe they, that's, that's, let me, let me give you guys some, let me give you some information <laughs> on what's been going on around here. Thank so you. That, no, no, just for yeah, how dissemination information has been taking place mm -hmm. in recent months. So, Winston over at the River Center has has taken on public information opportunities as well. One of the things that he does is he puts the information out in various media, media forms so that it gets out to the public, kind of like a public information officer, even though we don't have one funded for the city. The other thing is just about every department within the city has their own social media site where they have Facebook, Instagram, and other sites. The fire department, as an example, puts all their stuff on their Facebook site as well as the individuals who work for the fire department share that stuff within their various circles. They do the same things from the public work side, the announcements go out, the alerts go out. We're doing reverse 911s with the school district as it relates to certain things that happen throughout the city, even certain events that are out there. Palacca Recreation has its own site. The police department has its site. PAL has a site. So all these different places, they're putting this information out through email lists, they're putting it out on various social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They're all going out that way. We're doing everything, but and sometimes if we're doing Palaka Pride or some of these other events, we literally knock on the door and put door hangers out. Mm -hmm. So Public Works actually uses door hangers to get some of their information out as well as mailing it out inside of water bills. So we've done everything but send a pigeon out as a carrier to try to get this stuff to people. The next step is to order the electronic sign so that we can get it out. Some people just aren't engaged and they're going to complain. And the reality is, unless you knock on their door and say, what are your basic needs, it's going to be hard to reach them. And so we're trying as much as we can, with as little as we have, to get as much information out. The newspaper's been a great outlet for us. Um, they've started covering additional things, and so we just continue to push. And if you got any other ideas, we'll take them because we've tried all kind of stuff to get people engaged. Uh, and so even surveys have been going out with uh, the lack of young professionals getting stuff out to see what opinions are about getting additional information out. We've been getting responses. So it's been major effort put into place to get information out. And it never fails. Some people just don't get it because they're sitting at home waiting for it to knock on their door. It ain't happening. Um, Commissioner McCaskill. Just want to say again, welcome aboard, Carol. I had the opportunity to meet with her before we started tonight and just in, uh, adore your personality. I do have a question. I, did we have another one that started in finance also? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When did they start? Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Today? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But other than that, welcome aboard. Welcome to the family. And thanks for coming. I'm glad you lived here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carol. So, um, just recently, on the 7th, uh, Mr. Eddie Cutright, along with um, our new Recreation and Cultural Arts Department, did a, they did an open house and a welcome. They, uh, they've been doing some great things within the Recreation Department. They started a new cheer program. They had 43 kids that signed up initially for the cheer program. They had 38 parents show up to the initial meeting. Uh, and so they've been able to engage parents. Uh, they're working with LaFar Davis. Those kids meet twice per week at the Price Martin Center. One of the things the commission talked about was having more activity, community-oriented activities inside the Price Martin Center on a regular basis. And so they're in there twice a week with that. Uh, Mr. Cutright, also, I'll steal some of his thunder since he's not here, has also put in the works a new uh, after-school IT program, which he's working on at this time. Uh, he has an announcement that he wants us to make. Uh, they're kicking off adult kickball, corporate kickball, where they're asking various organizations to get their kickball teams together, like the Pilot Club, uh, <laughs> as well as the Fire Department, 
um, so that we can have some networking between various churches and civic and uh, professional okay. organizations throughout the community to meet the needs of the people. Uh, Ms. Kitchens, you can get your team ready too. Um, uh -oh. but, the, but the other piece is about this is um, they're just trying to find ways to get citizens to our community parks. Um, we're kicking off uh, baseball tryouts. Uh, they're gonna do baseball camps for the kids and they're, they're gonna do an inaugural season with that. Powell has basketball sign up starting uh, as well during the same time and they also have a uh, they're doing an inner city golf um, project where they're going to have local kids from the inner city become engaged in golf um, so that they can introduce the sports to kids who traditionally would not be exposed to the sport. Um, so those are some of the things that are happening um, on that front. Again, it's time for us to keep going to Tallahassee. Um, we are, it's time for us to, to look at the, the appropriations that we have in place. We should have four appropriations. Um, put into Tallahassee. Uh, Ms. Tucker has been working on those projects as, uh, as it relates to that, and we're going to move forward with our Total Streets project on St. John's Avenue. Uh, one of the critical pieces that we have is with us coming up for our festival season, um, looking at the completion of the projects on St. John's Avenue and seeing if that's going to interfere with the routes that we have for the parades, uh, for both the Christmas parade and also for Boo on the Avenue. And so I've talked to Mr. Deputy about alternatives just in case that construction is not finished. It's proposed that it should be done by that time, but just in case we're gonna make sure that from the city side we do everything we can to accommodate the routes. Uh, and so that's kind of where we are right now. Um, it's a new fiscal year. Uh, it's time to press the reset button to continually move forward. That's what we're gonna do in the city. We're excited uh, to have a new manager. We are pleased to have an interim who's coming here and really um, set the standard for work ethic. Uh, it's, it's hardly ever a time that you find him not here. And so we're excited. Mr. Alexander, you're quiet on me tonight. And so again, guys, we're just, uh, we're better together. We've had investors in town. Ms. Brown got an opportunity to, to come in. We had some investors come in looking uh, for ways in which to support uh, minority-owned small businesses. And uh, they chose Palaka out of three as one of their three destinations in, in the state of Florida to come in and actually uh, plant some seeds here. And so we are excited about the things that are happening. We just had another set of investors come in to look at additional opportunities for development within the cities. We'll hear more about that in the future. And so uh, you, every day there's someone new coming through this community because they realize that the gym is starting to shine again. And so we are just excited. If you have not read the Florida Times Union today, read the article that talks about the dying city gaining new life. It is an excellent article that talks about Palatka and Putnam County's resurgence. And so again, communities all over are excited about what's going on in this community. They're recognizing new energy and new life and new hope. And so as we move forward, don't be blinded by what you think you see, be blinded by what you know is here. And that's the beauty of the St. John's and the beauty of these folks that live here. Before you get together, that is what I was talking about. You need to get the word out. Oh, no, 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 And the mother of the city. <laughs> 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 <laughs>